please remember to post a like, subscribe to my channel, and hit the notification bell so you can always get my latest travel videos. Happy Sunday from Belgrade, Serbia. In Republic Square, you can see the children frolicking with the uh, water fountains, beautiful pedestrian streets, traffic free. To get from Belgrade Airport to the city center, you can take the bus number 72, which costs 0.8 to 1.3 euros, and it takes 30 to 40 minutes. You can take the minibus A1, which leaves every 20 minutes, costs 2.5 euros, it takes about 30 minutes. Or you can take a taxi costing 23 euros with a fixed price ticket that you buy at the airport. That takes about 25 minutes. Currency in Belgrade is Serbian dinars only. Credit cards are rarely accepted for transport, so you must exchange your currency at the airport. Currency machines are open 24 hours a day and accept US dollars and euros in denominations of 50s and 100s. Currency offices accept all currencies, but currency offices are only open 16 to 18 hours a day. The Baroque architecture of the buildings on the main street through the square What's going to be surprising to you about Belgrade, Serbia, is that we bombed this city in uh, 1999, just 24 short years ago. You heard right. Uh, Canada, USA, Great Britain, and a coalition called NATO decided to bomb this country and this city. You probably didn't know, and I bet if you asked a local politician, they wouldn't be able to tell you why they did it, but they did it. The bombing of Belgrade, Serbia, led to the destruction of the former nation called as Yugoslavia. Yugoslavia broke up into seven different nations, and um, that's where I'll be on this trip. Uh, the first place to stop here is in Belgrade, and then I'll be going to the other six countries and showing you what they look like. You will find tourism here, but just not from America or Canada or Great Britain, because of what we did to them. Uh, they do speak English here which is very surprising in the tourist area. I've been able to get around by just speaking English. The cost of living in Belgrade, Serbia, the cost of food is slightly less than what it is in any major North American city. Uh, the cost of public transit is about one third of what you pay in North America, but the cost of housing is less than half. Uh, it's between a third and a half of what you'd expect to pay in North America. So it's a very affordable place to be. Serbia's total population is about 7 million people. It's about half the population of the province of Ontario or two-thirds of the population of the state of Pennsylvania. Uh, surprised to know that. The city of Belgrade has a population of about 1.5 million people and it's about 20% of the population of this country. Belgrade is an excellent tourist destination. It's completely clean, uh, well-maintained, and very, very safe for tourists. The climate in Belgrade is actually quite nice. It's uh, plus temperatures um, during the winter, December, January, February, about um, the same temperatures in North Carolina. And uh, in the summer, it's hot, but it's not humid. So it's a very pleasant climate. Belgrade has some very pretty walking zones right in the downtown core that are pedestrian only. The main pedestrian area is called Keneza Mahela. It goes on for over a kilometer and a half, almost a full mile. Keneza Mahela is filled with souvenir shops, currency exchange places for tourists, popcorn stands, balloon making clowns for the kids, expensive designer shops, and fashion brands for the kids that are a little bit older. Keneza Mihela is a very long pedestrian street. As you admire the beautiful Baroque design buildings along Keneza Mihela, just remember to go down one of the side streets. The side streets offer relaxing bars and cafes. The little side streets eventually connect with Ovichlev Venek, which is this lovely pedestrian walking area with lower priced and quaint cafes, quaint bakeries, homemade jewelry stores. This pedestrian path continues on for another kilometer in each direction and it's lined with beautiful park benches, 
It's a lot quieter than Canesa Mihela. At the end of Ovikleshvenik, pedestrian walking street, is this beautiful park featuring a statue of one of their national heroes. The buildings surrounding the park are exquisitely and beautifully designed. It's an upscale and quiet neighborhood in the center of Belgrade with more tree-lined streets and cafes along with the beautiful designed apartment buildings is the Holy Archangel Michael Orthodox Church. In the main square we have the Prince Mehila Monument who is a national hero and also the uh, National Museum uh, of Serbia and it's an art museum. This is the House of Parliament in Serbia. It is the Capitol building. Lovely cafes, just like you would find in any major city like Paris. Beautiful Baroque architecture to the buildings. Cafes where you can sit inside or outside. A regal cafe and luxury hotel. And uh, not packed like you would find in Paris on a street like this. I'm going to show you a bit of the ancient history of Belgrade. That is not the recent history where we decided to bomb them. Uh, <laughs> ancient history. And as well, uh, I'm going to show you a little bit of the reasoning as to why Belgrade was formed. And uh, show you around uh, Belgrade Fortress, the waterfront, which is absolutely beautiful here. And uh, also a modern shopping mall. Ancient Belgrade was settled at the junction of two major European rivers. The Danube, which is the one that you see going side to side, and the Sava, which I'm showing you now. So the combination or the intersection of the Sava and the Danube formed Belgrade, and therefore formed Belgrade Castle. And this is the fortress, Belgrade Fortress, that protected the city of Belgrade and allowed trade to flourish into this area. Serbia is a landlocked country and therefore these two rivers form all of their commercial trade routes. There's the skyline of modern Belgrade and uh, the bridges crossing the Sava River and the Sava River has a beautiful waterfront. Another view of Belgrade Fortress. I didn't mention how ancient Belgrade Fortress really is. It was built in 279 BC. That's uh, before the birth of Christ, 279 BC. And uh, so I'll give you a timeline. That's pretty ancient. The Sava River is a commercial artery through Serbia. And there you see a commercial barge, absolutely huge, containing uh, metal that is being shipped down the river. Right beside the barge, you see tour ships that run afternoon and evening dinner cruises to take people on the Sava River. The Sava Riverfront is a beautiful pedestrian walking area with clubs, restaurants, and this turns into a nightclub. Upscale restaurants that turn this space into a dance floor at night. The restaurants just continue all the way down the waterfront. All of these string of waterfront restaurants are perfectly positioned for the cruise ships that come in like this Viking riverboat cruise ship that is docked here. It's worth noting how big these riverboat luxury cruise ships are. I'm just doing a video from the back and showing you the front. I'm in the middle of the ship. These ships are huge. Where the riverboat cruise docks, you can see the city stairs that go right up to the downtown area. And up there, you can see the Holy Church of Archangel Michael. The Belgrade pedestrian waterfront extends for well over two and a half kilometers. This is a beautiful area called Flower Square. It's got beautiful outdoor cafes, tree-lined street, nice coffee shops. Flower Square in Belgrade. Just in case you know how to read Cyrillic, 
that says, I love Belgrade. From the sign, you can see these beautiful fountains. From these other fountains is the Temple of Saint Sava. The temple or cathedral of Saint Sava is the largest church in the Balkans. Construction started in 1935. In 1941, when the Nazis invaded the former Yugoslavia, Saint Sava was used as a Nazi munition storage depot. The Cathedral of Saint Sava was built on the site of the grave of Saint Sava, who died in 1236. Over 70 Russian artists' time were donated by Russia to Serbia as a gift. The ceiling mosaic has over 15,000 gold tiles and an intricate design. The Temple of Saint Sava is the main and largest cathedral in Serbia. and definitely in Belgrade, and it's Serbian Orthodox. I'm gonna try to go inside and have a look. Inside at the temple, Saint Sava was born in 1179, and um, he is the saint of the medical doctors of the world, which I just found out at the door. Hopefully that's a fact. And um, uh, he was a prince of Serbia, and he was also a monk. This is a spectacular looking building. It is absolutely huge inside. I hope you can appreciate it from my videos. More of the Temple of Saint Sava. This is where the altar is. Um, it's Orthodox Serbian, so I'm assuming it's similar to Orthodox Russian where the, um, the, the people who attend the church stand. They don't sit, there are no chairs. That's traditional in this part of the Orthodox world. It is beautiful. <laughs> it's absolutely amazing church. My bus stop to my next destination is this beautiful tree-lined street with cafes and restaurants. Delta City is the closest mall to my Airbnb, so I'm going to go inside and see what's in there. It's definitely not the largest mall in Belgrade. Well, the inside looks it's a far cry from the malls I saw in um, Thailand and Malaysia. They are advertising Samsung, though. I'll have to look for that when I go to Russia tomorrow. What I meant by that is Russia will be sanctioned and th so therefore a lot of Western brands won't be available. So we're gonna check that out when I go to Russia tomorrow. I'll be traveling to 13 different countries on this trip. Five of these countries will be in the former Soviet Union, including Russia where I'm going in a few days. Seven of the countries were in the former Yugoslavia including Serbia, where I am now. The theme will be to basically to find out what these countries are really like. The perception that we have in the West, fed by our media, is that these countries are backwards, unsafe, primitive. Um, and uh, I'm gonna tell you the truth about what these countries are really like. I'm also gonna share with you that I'm a solo traveler and a senior citizen. And so far in Belgrade, I've never felt unsafe. I hope you enjoyed my video today in spite of that boring mall. Um, I'm heading to Russia tomorrow, so look forward to more videos from me tomorrow. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned. Please subscribe, post a like, and hit the notification bell for future videos.